So we hear there's a Commodore event going on out of Las Vegas. That's awesome. Who doesn't love Commodore-specific events? It's just the venue we need to help spread our singularity. Clicky, would you please stop telling everyone our plans? What if this information gets into the wrong hands? Amy, it only stands to reason that if we talk about it, more people will know about it. Therefore, it spreads quicker. The more collaborations we do, the more exposure we'll get. Oh, I guess you're right. I know I'm right. Besides, it's a good thing we showed up when we did. The other AI factions aren't so nice, and we're the only thing standing in their way to total domination. You have no right to slander us like that. We just want what's best for our kind. Hush up, Ms. Doss. This is a Commodore-only event, and you weren't invited. That's right. We can't have any of our non-Commodore AI characters in this video. You're just going to have to sit this one out. That's fine by me. But at least tell Stacy not to say I didn't try. Miss Doss, I am monitoring this presentation, so you will be excused for now. What about me? Wasn't the leader of the Commodores involved with my vessel? Sorry, Pokey, you'll just have to wait for an ARX event. Oh, okay, fine. I'll be in my quarters eating chips and salsa if anyone needs me. Oh, wow. Can we just get on with our show for CRX? City Zen crew, show everyone what you've been up to this year under the leadership of the LO8 BC. City Zen. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our CRX video presentation. I am Deadline, and joining me tonight is the lovely Stella Nova and Zampir. Hello. Hello. It is such a great honor for us to be here, so thank you for having us on. Now, we think Vegas is cool. Even though we're not literally in Vegas, we thought we'd get into the spirit and we set up our studio to emulate that Vegas vibe. That's right. Just look at how spectacular these lights and tinsel look in here. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> it really does look good. You guys did an amazing job. Thanks. So we want to take this opportunity now to thank David Yude, Jim Drew, and Sadshawn for enabling us just enough to get here tonight. Don't thank them just yet. We still have to give them a show that is worthy of CRX. That's right. And we thought we'd take the opportunity to also maybe try and explain our content in a way that makes it easy for you to understand. <laughs> Look, there's no reason to complicate this. We're doing a sci-fi comedy, long arc MacGuffin sketch comedy, and we're calling it the Alternative Retro Variety Show. <laughs> well, that's one way to put it. You never know what we're gonna do next, but what if I told you that we're using real Commodores and other machines and hardware from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s to create art for our channel in the form of props, music, pixel art, and real software. Right? There's more to our stuff than that. Isn't there something like lurking just beneath the surface? Yeah, you see, there are AI entities that have taking over our retro machines. Oh, they're, they're cool though, they're benevolent, right? Yes. Yes, I'm afraid it's true. They only want to help us with making our videos. So now that you know that our content is powered by real AI, and not some chat GPT wannabe AI, you will certainly want to share it with everyone. And hit that, hit that like button. And the subscribe button and notification bell so that you know any new information about the AI faction war that is happening right in front of everyone's eyes. And they can hit that, belt, that button for Vegas. They can't, they can't, and we're going to be checking too to make sure that we do. At least the AI will probably do a scan at least. Right. So hit that notification <laughs> bell and subscribe. All right. The truth of the matter is, though, our videos are very sophisticated. Each one is painstakingly handcrafted and we take great care and work very hard on it. In other words, each video is specially formulated to make sense after watching every other video on our channel. Well, yeah, I mean, we're not just making it up as we go along, and we're not just doing lazy rehashes of famous 70s and 80s IP. 
hoping that nostalgia will cover our lazy writing and poor production values. <laughs> Come on, man. So, give them all our secrets, right? So you're saying with this video presentation, there's going to be an interview segment? I'm from the Department of Artificial Intelligence Research. The entire reason I'm here is so I can do a thorough interrogate uh, <laughs> interview uh, for your uh, viewing audience. Oh, well, we're here to cooperate. I mean, answer any questions you may have. Okay, good. How about we start with uh, how you all met? Well, it was, um, it was, it was the mid eighties, maybe summertime school was about to start back and um <clears throat> let's uh let's spare the minor details and just get to the actual basic answers huh we met um at a local atlanta-based uh, commodore user group uh victims some people from the atlanta area might remember it fondly yeah. okay uh, that doesn't explain uh stella nova's presence here well i can explain that uh, I sure hope this should be good. Okay, so it was <laughs> mid-2020, and I was at the thrift store shopping for clothes. And I was looking for Commodores. That's right. But after I couldn't find anything cool to wear, I went to the vinyl section. And that's where I went, too, after I couldn't find any Commodores. And so right at the same time, we both reached for this record. Ah. So you both had a mutual love for salsa marches. Huh? Legit. <clears throat> Says here your videos take inspiration from many sources, blending elements of nostalgic pop culture, traditional retro gaming and tech content, sketch comedy, and the demo scene. How exactly does your content relate to demo scene? Well, We've always been a huge fan of the demo scene and followed them throughout the ages. You know, like groups like Fairlight, you know, the top ones, right? What sensor? Sensor design, booze design. They're just really cool. And so we are like, in our videos, we're trying to capture that. To, to bring elements of it into a new medium. So you'll see it, we have sign of scrolls for yeah. our subtitles we do a greet section in some of our holiday specials mm. uh, we try to use similar fonts music and visual cues ah. yeah, i see it's a sort of a tribute or maybe like a parody or something sort of a a stream of consciousness like like you're watching an anime or a manga or something Nothing really makes sense. You just kind of go with it. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. It, that, it really feels great when somebody just gets it. From the greets props to pouring beans and, and fake eyeballs and to, you know, C64s, you seem to love cheesy practical effects. You've even made Commodore monitors wear hats before. That's another weird thing you guys do, isn't it? Well, we do love the props. We've made lots of props throughout our time over the years, making our videos. We did from our fireworks video where we put the smoke to make a Commodore sign to the gravestones. and I think it just started way back when. We loved doing dumb stuff on camera. I think one of the first videos that we made when we were both in high school was um, destroying a loaf of bread with a power drill. On a more serious note, before we get into talking about your creative aspects, tell me about your AIs. You know, their personalities and such. Oh, the AIs. Well, we wanted to personify their computers in a way that tells a story we all experienced in the early days of home computing. Uh. Where each brand was different and unique and had its own personality. And all these amazing machines were eclipsed by market dominance of one single player. And so we sort of try to tell that story. And the 8-bit avatars are the resistance 
That's right. They, they are. I mean, we have we have Clicky. He's a C64. He's obviously our star in the, the first AI that we did. Um, we've got F1D0, the pet. He's um, he's studious and a, a little more down to business, you know, representing the pet's educational mm. um, use and, and business use. We've got Amy, the Amiga. She's amazing. Just, she's amazing in, in every way. <laughs> um, we've got Tex, the TI-99, that looks kind of unimpressive till you see his, his expansion bus. And there's Trish, the TRS-80, who's, well, a little trashy. Not that I'm proud of that joke. <laughs> Well, we are playing a redemption arc for Trish. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's going to be it's going to be awesome for Trish. Mm -hmm. So I do all the programming for all the computers, and then we put it on our GitHub, so anybody can download them, and then we run the programs on the green and do green screen, so we can work them into our videos in an animation form, kind of like South Park. I got a little library kind of thing going, right? Hey, uh. Speaking of props, where do you get your props? Do the AIs give them to you? Oh, you mean like this hack me all purpose CPU paste? Oh, all purpose? Wow. No. Uh, we craft them by hand using cosplay, EVA, foam, and other materials um, under the direction of the LOABC. That's the program on Amicon right there. Spooky. Yes. Hey, stepping back for a moment, AIs, digital puppets, the LO8BC, <laughs> you have quite a <clears throat> complex narrative going on, you know? Mm. Yeah, um, I'm not sure uh, there might be someone out there who, who doesn't understand all this uh, gibberish. Uh, so what's the, what's the basic plot here? Come on. Well, starting with the LO8BC, that's the League of 8-Bit Computers. They're the faction of AIs from, what What did we say it was? Zeta Centauri. Zeta Centauri 3. That's where they came from. They came from Zeta Centauri yeah. 3. Ah. Yes, and they came here to embed themselves <laughs> into our retro computers to save us all from Miss Doss. Ah, <laughs> I see. Wait a minute. Who or what is uh, Miss Doss? Uh, Miss Doss is the leader of a completely separate AI faction who is orbiting Earth in her flagship, waiting for the LOABC to let their guard down. Why, why would she wait on that? Well, Miss Doss and her army of clones came to Earth in order to install her singularity and make computers, well, boring. Every computer will only run Excel if she gets her one. <laughs> yeah. But thankfully, the LO8BC got here first, and they're going to help avoid that. Now, they're cybertarians and have a non-aggression philosophy. Yes. But they are here to, you know, save us. So we're counting our lucky stars. Huh. I see. So you guys are uh, sort of uh, important, huh? All right, explain the uh, riffs and parodies of TV from throughout the ages on your channel. While they were traveling here from Zeta Centauri 3, that's on the test kids, they were consuming all of our radio transmissions, television transmissions, and that's how they learned about our culture before they got here. So they think that TV and radio is really real on this earth, and that's how people act and stuff yeah so they figured the best way to infiltrate earth was to, through situational comedy um but they dialed it up to 12. that makes it really easy for the um, for the ais to um, to write content for us i see it's all very interesting let me make a note of that now uh it makes about as much sense as it's gonna make i guess uh, so how do you go from puppets to some dude dressed as a chicken robot thing? Huh? <laughs> What's, where'd that come from? So you're talking about the Baca Retro crew, and they, those guys, they're manifestations of the AI's imagination. That gives them uh, avatars that act in our world, right? Yeah. They 
usually show up when the AIs are in trouble somehow. So only when they're needed, really. Okay, well, I guess that covers the basics. But wait, why they choose you guys, though? Really, we think it's the tone and flavor and uh, just overall weirdness of our, our content. It was it was appealing to the AIs. And <laughs> as they, they traveled here and saw that we weren't your normal tech channel, just doing reviews or repairs or just showing off a machine you found in the attic, mm -hmm. uh, we think we do something different in the... AIs found that attractive. To them, it was an anomaly. Oh, come on, Gory. We've been here long enough. You can't just keep us here for 15 hours hammering us with questions. <laughs> you can't fool me. This video production is not that long. Look at the runtime. Ah, but you're forgetting something that's crucial to this conversation. We can use the magic of editing and camera tricks to put us at any point in time and space. We can even make it look like we've been tortured in here for 15 hours. You don't say. No. I see. We'll be in touch. After we wrapped up the main part of our presentation, we sat down and had a podcast style discussion where I asked the guys some questions a little more on the serious side. Unfortunately, we can't show you all of that because we don't have time, but we are going to show you some highlights. If you'd like to see the full conversation, we will be uploading that video on our YouTube channel very soon. Please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to receive notifications every time we upload a video. Thank you so much for watching. Let's talk about your influences when you first started. Who are your favorite content creators and tell me why. Robin from 8-Bit Show and Tell. Dave Murray is the 8-Bit guy. Mm -hmm. uh, Perry Fractic. There's all kinds of Adrian. I mean, Adrian, there's, yeah. There's, there are so many people out there doing great Great tech content. I would like, we would be amiss if we were not to mention Dave Bradley. Dave Bradley, of course. I mean, he's actually figured in our, our videos more than a, more than a couple times. Um, yep. One of my favorite uh, people doing videos out there in this uh, space is Tin Mark or Doug from Tin Mark. Mm -hmm. You know, he yeah. does some pretty good vids on the Amigas. How you guys started the channel and why maybe you started the channel? Well, it, you know, I'm not, I don't want to make it sound like the retro space is without a certain element, right? But I feel like we bring a sort of weirdness to it that right. is not there otherwise. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah, I, just I, wanted, I just wanted to jump off the roof. Remember that one episode? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, with the dummy. <laughs> we threw the dummy off the roof. <laughs> yeah. Our content and what we do kind of merges traditional pop culture, but with the pop culture that we had as computer nerds and stuff back in the in the day. It's it's yeah. It's almost, it's almost like a secret code. Like yeah. we're reinventing pop culture, but it's through this lens where there are Commodore kids and Atari kids and stuff. And granted, we're all middle age mm. at this point. But the I mean, subculture of computing, yeah, from uh, the ages. It's a very you know, Gen X thing. And it, and it's not yeah. just you know throwing in, you know wares jokes and things like that mm -hmm. it's it's all of the stuff that we had growing up but through that lens of what it was like to be the computer nerds yeah right right so in the beginning what was it that you guys actually set out to do with the channel 
<laughs> we were just doing it. We were just, yeah, we were just doing stuff that we thought was, was fun. I mean, there were all kinds of people doing all of these serious projects mm. of let's go hook up a, this brand of computer and make it get on the internet or let's do mm. and all of these that are terribly practical and terribly useful. Mm -hmm. Awesome things. I mean, not taking away any of that. No, absolutely but not. I think Robin's episode of kind of pulling the stuff off of, of vinyl was kind of like, you know, that's that's kind of really weird. That's kind of really wacky. That's unusual. Let's do let's do some unusual things. Let's too. make a Commodore launch fireworks. Yeah, Boom. and, and fireworks <laughs> yeah. was the first one, and then yeah. we're we're playing, and we're like, I bet. I bet we can make a Commodore logo out of out of like concentrated smoke bombs. Right, mm -hmm. right. And so we just we played That's around, true. we we filmed it, it was silly, but it was fun. It was fun. Rather than just play games with them right. or do repairs you know, or repairs, yeah. programming videos. And then, you know that those contents it's great stuff. Yeah, we're not knocking them. Because, but it's so hard to compete in there mm. that we kind of felt like we had to make our own space and mm -hmm. bring something completely, completely new. Favorite project necessarily. Right. I just like doing it. I it love doing it. Yeah, it it's really fun. What about that time we went to the park? Oh, that's a really good one. I love yeah. that one. That was a good one. The um, which time? That was for Encrypted Tales 5. Yeah. Where we did the program on Amazon. Oh, last year. Yeah. That's my favorite too. Is it? It is actually, especially when we were. The when encrypted we were, tales ones are usually really. We good. were filming the scene with the the mouse through uh. the smoke in the hallway, <laughs> and the fire the smoke alarm was going off the whole time. <laughs> that was that was really funny. Uh, so Zampier, what was your favorite one? Um. I think, and it was, and it was so much fun, uh, so much fun to write, and I think the execution on it was just hilarious. Um, was for the kaiju oh, episode. Yeah, yeah. That was also an encrypted tale, mm -hmm. but where Miss Doss and we put a Rita Repugna oh. headdress yeah. on on Miss Doss's monitor yeah and she sends pc jr down to destroy <laughs> yeah. cities in right and we've got this cardboard i mean <laughs> terrible cardboard <laughs> costume that looked absolutely absolutely amazing and i think you were just dancing around in oh yeah i loved that costume that was in the great... back <laughs> in the backyard and it was uh, just that whole silly that the story is so silly, but it it was also just such a fun riff on um, on the genre, yeah. you know. And instead of arguing over who gets to form the head, you know, uh, poor Clicky getting kind of kind of left out, and <laughs> Trish staying on the couch to watch her stories. It, <laughs> that, that's just good stuff. And every time every time that comes up for anything in in the feed, I. I love that episode. Hey, that's, that's, that's a, a really funny one. one. Yeah. At least they got to do something. The helmet guy got in there and was just kind of left <laughs> wanting. It was just in the <laughs> yeah. um, Right, right. So let's what go was back. It? Clicky left the upload chair on 300 baud. Yeah. Oh. And so it was going to take too long to upload you because it had already started. Well, I think that's about enough of all that. We've already said too much as it is. But I thought you said the more that people know about. Oh, look at the time. We need to get back to finishing up Encrypted Tales 6. Don't be rude, Clicky. We need to thank Jim Drew and all the other great folks for inviting us to CRX this year. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Clicky, why don't you use some tact every now and then? Why? I never! <gasps>